Hi, my name is Margret Posch. In this video, I want to talk about Java value types and reference types and how to pass arguments to methods. So at the very beginning, I want to point out that there are different areas in the memory. There is a stack. This is where um, local variables and parameters are stored. And there is a heap. This is where objects are stored. So let's start with value types. Here I have an integer variable, number one. Integer is a value type. And you can see that the number 12, the value of my integer, is stored directly in the variable. Java has exactly eight value types. And these are the eight primitive types. Byte, short, int, long, float, double, char, and boolean. Now everything else in Java is a reference type. For reference types, a reference to the object is stored in the variable. So here I have a variable time1 and it is of type time. Time is a class I wrote myself. And every time you write a class and you create an object of the type, it is created on the heap. In Java, and I want to point this out again, all types are reference types, with the exception of the eight primitive types. And when you look in the memory area next to time one, uh, there is not the value directly, there is a reference, which really is an address an address that allows you to navigate to the object on the heap. Different programming languages have different ways how to pass their arguments. They could be passed by value, could be passed by reference. However, in Java, all arguments are passed by value. In Java, we have reference types, but we have no pass by reference. Primitive arguments are passed into methods by value and reference type arguments are also passed into methods by value. This is sometimes a bit counterintuitive, so I include the link down here to the Java tutorial where you can read up a bit more about it. For now, I'm just going to show a code example. Let's just start with the first statement. We are going to declare and initialize an integer variable number one. And this is how it looks. On the stack, I have um, a variable called number one. It is of type integer, and the value 12 is directly stored in my variable number one. For value types, variables store directly the value. Next, we create a reference type. The variable is called time1, it's of type time, and we create a new time object with the default constructor. So here I can see, in addition to number one, we have now a second variable on the stack, but this second variable does not include the actual time object. It includes the address, the reference, that allows you to navigate to the time object that is created on the heap. All my fields, hours, minutes, seconds, are set to zero because we use the default constructor. Now we have the default value. So for reference types, variables store a reference to the object on the heap. Next, we're going to call the modify value type method and we're going to pass number one. Every time we call a method, a new stack frame is created. You can see the heavy red line. This is a barrier. Everything below is grayed out. It is still there, but we can no longer access it. All we can access at this point is the parameter, which is n. And n has the value 12 because we passed number one, which has value 12, as an argument. So here you can see the value of variable number 1, 12, gets copied into the parameter variable n. 
we copy the value directly so we call this pass by value now you can see the declaration of modify value type so all it does is it uh, receives an argument of type integer and it uh, modifies it it just assigns it a value 3 and you can see on the stack after the assignment and is no longer 12 it's now 3 at this point modify value type reaches the end of the body we are back in the main method the next statement is a print statement and if I look at my memory I can see the stack frame disappear because the, the method had terminated so time one number one is still there it's no longer grayed out because now we're back in the calling method main you can see the original value type remains unchanged number one is still 12 and if I'm going to print number one I'm going to print 12 now next we are going to call the modify reference type method and we're going to pass time one you can see when we call a new method a new stack frame is created once again we have the heavy red line which indicates that we can no longer access anything below on the stack so time one number one is once again grayed out but we got a new parameter the new parameter is called t and it includes the exact same reference as time one the value of variable time one which is a reference to an object that means it's an address that allows you to navigate to that object gets copied into the parameter variable t so once again we are copying the value from time one directly into parameter t the value is an address so you can see on both of those orange fields we have the same value copied we have the same reference we're now pointing to the same object once again this is pass by value because we copy directly the value in the memory of t here you can see the declaration of modify reference type all we do is we modify t t has a set time method where we can just assign a certain time three hours three minutes three seconds and when I look at the memory I can see my parameter t has a reference to the object on the heap and through that reference it was able to modify our minute and seconds at this point modify reference time is finished and the control is returned to the calling method which is main so the last statement is a print statement of time one when I look at the memory I can see that the stack frame from modify reference type has been removed number one time one are no longer grid out because now we're back in the calling method which is main I can see that time one still includes the very same reference the very same address it had since the very beginning however we were able to modify the object from the method modify reference type the original reference type is now changed